Hi everyone, this is Miss Anna from the Eldersburg Library and I am here with another YA Book Talk video. These are one of my favorite kind of videos to film because I just get to not really prepare much and just ramble at y'all about books and drink coffee for like however long this video ends up being. So let's just get started. Um, I figure that because it is February when this will come out, I would kind of try and put like a sort of Valentine's Day spin on things and recommend books based on your favorite romance ideas or romance tropes in books. I keep wanting to say fanfic tropes. It's essentially the same thing. But we're going to go through a few different kinds of romance stories. These aren't necessarily romance novels, but like the romance present in the book. And then at the end we'll have a couple of books that aren't romance focused at all, because sometimes you just don't need that in your life. I've got to put on my cool gamer earphones here so you can hear me better in the microphone. So that's what my friends call them when I went on a video chat. So the first kind of book I'm going to recommend is books for people who just like really nice uplifting romances. I feel like that's what we all need right now. Just the world's on fire. We need books that are just fun. And for that, the first one I'm going to recommend is anything by the author Morgan Matson. She's written a lot of YA contemporaries over the years, and they're all great. But the one I'm going to talk about specifically, oops, it went away. I don't have a physical copy in the branch, but it's Save the Date by Morgan Matson. It looks like this. This is just a really cute YA contemporary. Um, the main character is a teenage girl named Charlie who's part of this really big family. She's the youngest of many siblings and her older sister is getting married and she's going to be a bridesmaid. And the book opens on the days right before the wedding when everybody in the family's gathering. The wedding's going to be in their backyard of their big house. And then suddenly everything starts going wrong, but like in a comedic way. So as the family is planning for this wedding, there's also, they're also coming to a lot of endpoints in their life. Um, for one, they're getting ready to sell their house, and the mother in the family is the cartoonist for this well-known newspaper comic, which will be coming to an end soon. So Charlie, the main character, just wants this wedding to be perfect as sort of like a last hurrah for the house. And for a lot of the things going on with the family, but then everything starts to go wrong. The, her older brother brings home a new girlfriend who just doesn't fit in with anyone. Um, a popular news show is coming to interview the mother about the comic, and they bring them a beagle puppy that looks like the dog in the newspaper comic that they don't have in real life, because the comic is based on the family. So now they have a dog running around. Um, just anything comedic that can go wrong with this wedding goes wrong, and it is just a really cute book. There's a low-key romance between the main character and a guy from the wedding planning company. Um, it's just, I don't want to spoil too much of it, but it's such a fun time. It's a long book, but I read it really quick because it goes quick. It feels like a fun little, like, Netflix movie. Um... There is, like, a tiny bit of, like, family drama, just, like, a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, that the newspaper cartoon that the mother draws is based on the family. So there's a rift between family members who are okay with their stories being put in the newspaper every day and family members who aren't. And between the really well-written family stuff and just the general fun plot, it's just such a cute book. Highly recommend it. The next book is also just like a light fluffy contemporary, very uplifting and nice. Um, I think I've told y'all about this book like three times now, but I really love it, so I'm going to talk about it again. It's You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. It looks like this. I also don't have a physical copy of this one. Uh, this book is available as an audiobook on Hoopla, which is very good and a very quick read. And You Should See Me in a Crown is about a girl named Liz who has big plans for college. She wants to play a school orchestra and eventually become a doctor. But she needs money to pay for school. And her town is, excuse my staticky hair, really, her town is really invested in the senior prom. Like, to a very intense degree. And whoever wins prom king and queen each year gets a scholarship for college. So she decides to run for prom queen in order to go for this scholarship. 
But then what she doesn't expect is that she ends up developing feelings for another girl who's running for the title. And I've said this before that you think it's going to be like an intense rivalry book, but it's just really, really sweet. Like all the, the like, of course, there's like a mean popular girl, but most of the characters in this book are just genuinely nice people. The romance is a very cute, like, friends to romantic relationship story. If you want something that's a quick read and just very uplifting, you should see Me in a Crown is a great one. Next up, if you like kind of slice of lifey, slow burn, um, not too much plot, but really good relationship writing, I'm going to recommend you Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Gauchel. I really hope I didn't pronounce that name wrong. Um, this is a graphic novel, a young adult graphic novel. It looks like this. It's really pretty. And Bloom is a story about two teenage boys. Um, one of them, I think his name is Ari, um, wants to move to the city, to Baltimore actually. I think this book is set in Maryland. I'm 90% sure it's set in Ocean City. But he wants to move to the city to play in a band, but his parents want him to stay home and work in their family bakery. So as he's working in this bakery over the summer, he meets a guy named Hector who's in town to take care of his grandmother's house, and he starts working at the bakery. And over time, they start to develop this friendship that eventually um, blooms into something more. And it is just a really, really great slow burn. There's not a huge amount of plot to this book. It is very, very, like, you just follow the characters as they go through their lives. And some, like, some dramatic stuff happens towards the end, some more serious stuff. But overall, it's just a really nice, relaxing book as you follow these characters. The art is very pretty. It's all in different shades of blue. And if you're looking for just something that's kind of low-key, and again, it's pretty cool that this is set in Maryland. And what I am, again, like, 90% sure is Ocean City. So, that's always fun. That's like, that's a real place. Um, but I really love this one. It's a really good graphic novel. So for our next prompt, do y'all like fake dating trope? Because it seems like young adult literature sure does lately. Because it is everywhere. And you know what? I like it too, so I'm not complaining. But for this one, I figured... I would go with one of the more well-known examples and recommend To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. Um, this has a Netflix movie that a lot of you probably heard of. It is such a cute movie. It's really good. And the book is fantastic. It's actually a series of three books. I think the adaptation of the third movie comes out this month. But they are just fantastic. One of my favorite contemporary series. And the story follows a girl named Lara Jane who every time she gets a crush on someone, she writes them a letter and puts it in a box in her room. She's written five of these letters in all, and it's just a way for her to get her feelings out that once she writes this letter, she feels like she's had some closure on her feelings. But one day, somehow these letters get mailed to all of the boys that she's had crushes on over the years. And one of these young men happens to be her sister who just left for college in Europe. It just happens to be her sister's ex-boyfriend. So even though she wrote this letter before this guy and her sister started dating, she doesn't want him to think that she still has feelings for him. So she ends up working with another one of the letter recipients, a guy named Peter, who she was friends with when she was younger. And he has just broken up with his girlfriend, and they decide to fake date each other to make his girl ex-girlfriend jealous and to throw the other guy off of her tracks. And they create this contract for a fake relationship, but eventually start, of course, developing real feelings for each other. And I won't tell you much beyond there, but this is just a really nice series. The main character is very well written. I believe it's from her perspective, and it's a really good perspective. You also get a lot of good family stuff. The main character has two sisters, and they're both very well developed as well. And it's a great series. There's not a huge amount of contemporary, like, realistic fiction books that are series. But this is a really great one. This has kind of become a YA modern classic, and I definitely recommend it. So, shifting gears here now, I'm going to suggest a few books for if you like really in your kind of romancy but more fantasy oriented if you just like really over the top dramatic stories very like intense if there are any romantic elements they're very very 
again, over the top dramatic. I've forgotten how to speak in this video, but I'm going to recommend some fantasy titles to you that are just a little angstier, but I want to recommend a couple that I thought were kind of underrated. So first up, I've got the Last Namsara series by Kristen Cicerelli. Uh, this is what the first book looks like because I don't have it with me. I do have the second book, The Caged Queen. And the third book is called The Skyweaver. Uh, this is a series of three, I guess they're called companion novels. Because you can technically read them in any order. I will tell you that the second two books do spoil the first one. And the first one is a lot more intense than the other two. Um, but if you just wanted to read the second or third one, you could go ahead and read it and pick up context clues of who the other characters are. Because each one... You've got, like, this established world with, like, this established group of characters, and each one follows another character from the first book. But the first book, The Last Namsara, is set in a fantasy world, and the main character is a girl named Asha, and she is the daughter of the royalty of this kingdom, and she has been tasked with this, passed down through the generation roles of being a dragon slayer. This world has... All sorts of dragons and the monarchy has decided that they need it to be eradicated so she essentially kills dragons for the king and she's betrothed to this terrible awful man and one day she gets this offer that she will be free of this betrothal if she kills this ancient basically mythological dragon so the story goes from there. I don't want to spoil too much of it. It's a very, very intense fantasy book. And it's like the world building is just fantastic. You get all these, um, like the forbidden stories that are banned from being told in this kingdom over time. The main character discovers these stories and begins to learn that what she has been taught about her world might not be the truth. And it's just a great setup. It's a Pretty, it works as a standalone fantasy novel, but then there's two sequels. The Caged Queen follows a side character from the first book, and it's essentially a romance drama set in a fantasy world. There's not a huge amount of magic in it, but it's definitely, definitely there. And it's about a king and queen who have married each other for purely political reasons, even though they do have a shared past in their childhood. And... The queen gets an offer that she can break a curse that's been placed upon her sister if she kills her husband, the king. And it's just, just, I'm not super one for like really angsty romance, but this one is just fun. It has all your, all your cliches, but done in a great way. It's just a really, the relationship between these two main characters is just very interesting. And then the third book, the... Skyweaver. It looks like this. And this is a romance slash fantasy story. It focuses on two main female characters, the captain of the guard to a king and queen who has been tasked with tracking down this legendary pirate. And the pirate who is, she just wants to be free of these people that she's been forced to work with and she also has this connection to the gods of this fantasy world. So these two characters end up colliding with each other in some very dramatic and angsty ways, but it's just, it's spoiled straight up in the description of the book, I think. It's like a slow burn enemies to lovers romance. If that's what you're into, it has all the cliches, but done in a great way. Highly recommend this series. And the next series I have to recommend is a trilogy, and I think it's complete now, and I think there's a spinoff coming out soon. It's one of my favorite series of all time. It's Caraval by Stephanie Garber. And this is a fantasy series about two sisters who live in a world where every year on this island, there's this kind of festival game event called Caraval that's run by this mysterious figure named Legend. And it's this series of... This magical, the series of magical events and challenges and spectacles, all in this huge game, and the winner of the game gets to make a wish and receive whatever they want. So the main story focuses on two sisters, Scarlet and Tella, who live with an abusive father who's just set to marry them off, and Tella ends up running away to find this Caraval to go to this island.
and Scarlet follows her with the help of a mysterious sailor, and in order to find her sister, she must participate in the game. And it is just one of the most atmospheric series I've ever read. I would love for this series to become a movie. I want it to be animated because that would be so pretty. But it is just elaborate and really unique magic. Really fun, creative things I haven't really seen in a lot of other series. You've got the magical competition element, but you've also got romances. Each of the sisters are involved in very interesting romances over the book. There's a bit of a love triangle, which I know like kind of words some people off, but it's a very cleverly done one. It doesn't really show up to book two. And just any, if you like any kind of fantasy book, this is just a super unique one. If you want to read a fantasy book that isn't either about like restoring magic to the kingdom or the magic quest to find the thing, this is like a good exception to that. Um, I just really love this series, highly recommend it, which is what I keep saying over and over. And for our final category, we have books that do not focus on romance elements at all, that either just don't include it, or it's just kind of sidelined, because sometimes you're just not about that when you're reading. And the next one I have to show you a lot, guys, is one that I literally just read, and I loved it so much. It's A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is a fairly new release book. It's a fantasy book, and it's set in this alternate version of present-day America, that has been shaped by myths and legends. So this is everything from ghosts and vampires to different kinds of creatures from folklore. It's just a magical version of present day America. And it's one of those really cool fantasy worlds where weird magical stuff happens and that's just everyday life. Like it's not out of the ordinary to see a vampire or to communicate with the dead. It's just something that happens. And I just love that. It's a really cool subgenre of fantasy. But the main character is a girl named Alatsue, um, called Ellie, throughout the book. And through her um, Lipian Apache family, she has inherited the ability to raise the ghosts of dead animals and to be able to communicate with human ghosts, which is an incredibly dangerous thing to do. Because if a ghost, if a human ghost returns, they will not be the person they were in the past. They will be a vengeful spirit. So in a dream, Latsue learns that her cousin has been murdered. And her cousin gives her a message about who killed him. So when she and her mother travel to the cousin's town in order to be with his widow and baby son, she becomes determined to bring this murderer to justice. And I won't go much further into it, but it is just a beautifully written book. One of the coolest settings I've ever read. Uh, the main character is asexual, which is something we don't see a huge amount of in YA, so that's always good to see. And it's just, it's really fun. It has a really unique writing style. There's very nice illustrations um, above all the chapter headings. I just like illustrations. But I loved this book. It is a very unique story. It's kind of got murder mystery elements. You know who the murderer is, but you don't know their motive. And there's also a ghost dog, and he's a very good boy. So we love good dogs in books. So highly recommend a lot. Away. It's my favorite book I've read this year so far. Go read it. And finally, we have another book that I recently read that, well, I audiobooked it, it was on Hoopla. Um, a Lots Away is also on Hoopla in audio, and so is the Last Name Sara series. But I'm going to recommend to you Elysium Girls by Kate Pentecost. Um, this is a... what genre is this book? I guess it's kind of a fantasy, sci-fi, dystopian combination. Um, this is going to be a hard one to explain. Um, so Elysium Girls is a standalone book and it's set in, it opens in the 1930s during the Dust Bowl and it's this group of people who are traveling. So they are stopped by these two goddesses because the goddesses want to play a game using these people and they are ordered to create a town and create a community and if they within 10 years can create a perfect community they will be allowed to rejoin society but if not, after those 10 years, they will all be essentially eradicated. And the Dust Soldiers will return and kill them all. So the story takes place 
Ten years later, when the town is about to have its judgment, they've established this town called Elysium. They are completely cut off from the rest of the world. Like, they have no idea that World War II was going on. And the main character is a girl named Sal. Both of her parents have died over the past ten years. And she is kind of ostracized from the town because she had these prophetic visions that turned out to not be true. But when the kind of matriarch of the town, the leader who spoke to these goddesses, who is known to be a witch, because there are just witches in this book, um, takes her on as an apprentice. And she thinks that she's going to be trained to be the next leader of this town. But then this mysterious stranger shows up. He is this guy her age named Asa, who also has magical witch abilities, and the people in the town start turning to him instead. But when something goes horribly wrong, and they are outcast from the town into this enormous desert, and they end up falling in with this group of girls who have all left their own communities. And it's just, from there, it's this very intense and really cool story about witches and magical mechanical horses and just this really interesting dynamic between this group of girls and between the two main characters. There's like hints of romance in the book, but it's very sidelined. It's not the main plot. And I am describing it terribly because this is a really bizarre book, but it is fantastic. It's this group of characters has to choose between surviving on their own or helping this town that has outcast them all for whatever reason. And it is just really, really good. I highly recommend this one. If you're looking for a standalone, a really good audiobook, or something that focuses more on platonic relationships while still having some romance to it, Elysium Girls is a great one. It also just has such a unique setting. But that's going to be about it for this book talk. I feel like I've rambled at you guys enough. Um, I know that a lot of these books, like I mentioned, are available on Hoopla. Um, we have them all in our library collection as physical copies, as I have here. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the books, please go ahead and comment on the Facebook post. You can also shoot me an email at ajohns at carr.org. And I hope I recommended something that you guys will like. So everyone have a great day, have a great Valentine's Day, and I will see you in another video. Have a great night, or have a great day.